Hey, everybody. <laughs> Hey, how's it going everybody? My name is Jimmy Brooks, this channel is all about fitness and cars, and I wanted to present to you guys my new temporary work car. It is the finest exotic in all the land, the Nissan Versa Hatchback SV, which stands for Super Veloce. So I'm borrowing this Nissan Versa for a few months, a friend of mine was gracious enough to let me use it, you know, for the time being while I'm searching for a car. I think I have a prospect already for, you know, my new work car. So in this video I'll take you through a quick tour, discuss some of the specs, and we will be doing a Q&A at the end from questions I received yesterday. So stick around for that, and I'm going to hop in the car and get out of this really rare California freezing cold. This poor little Versa was hit on the side here about a year ago. I don't know the details of the accident, but as you can see, it's all bashed in here, but luckily the car, you know, the door stays shut, no lights, and it's all good to drive. There were no air caps on this car when I got it, so it's borrowing the Camaro's rainbow caps of justice. So two cool things right off the bat with this car. This is the torquiest four-cylinder from a dead stop I have ever felt. It feels like if you guys have ever felt a, or driven a pickup truck, basically any V8 pickup truck, it has that like instant torque for towing. And this gives a similar feeling. It's just, it has nowhere near the torque. It's only 127 pound feet, but just like, like, you know how like a Hellcat produces like way, way more torque than a ZL1 from a dead stop. That's why it does burnouts everywhere. Um, it, it had something like 400 pound feet of torque at like 500 RPM, something crazy like that. I think, uh, the first year, the way the torque delivery is in this car, I think this is probably delivering something like 70, 80 pound feet of torque versus other old four cylinders. It's like all, like if you've ever driven like a 2004 Honda Civic, it's just a dog off the line. Same with my Camaro. Unless you launch it, it's a dog off the line and then zoom, you know, turbo kicks in. So pretty cool. I like that. I can like, you know, jump in front of anyone in this car. So the second thing is more of a fun fact, but my dad back in the day had a 2006 Nissan Sentra, which is the same exact four speed transmission and 1.8 liter motor. And that thing went on the original transmission and motor went 400,000 miles and, until it started having like consistent problems. So what that means for me is reliability while borrowing this car. You know, I, I only expect to put, you know, at the most like 10, 20,000 miles on this car while I have it for the three months. So, you know, I don't expect anything to go wrong with it being that this car is that and it's only at 205k okay so inside the versa here the biggest change for me is this is a four-speed automatic and i forgot how awesome it is to drive an automatic when you drive 200 miles a day in a lot of city I'm really glad that I did get to learn manual at a pretty fast pace on the job because I was driving, you know, eight hours a day in the Honda or Camaro. But now that it's been almost 150,000 miles of manual driving for me in the last two and a half years, it is super luxurious and super nice to be in traffic and not have to shift and just be fiddling with the clutch constantly. I'll make a bigger video about the manual versus auto debate in the future, but my thoughts on it so far, just to sum things up, I don't think there's really a, a replacement for manual when we're talking about having fun in a car when it comes to like driving on a canyon road or a track the connection you get from a manual the the ultimate analogy i made up for it really is you know when you're trying to have fun driving a manual is like playing guitar and driving an auto is like playing guitar hero you're having you know the same sound is coming out but you know, it's doing it for you, basically. There's a there's a, comp a big component lost. I know that's a pretty extreme, you know, comparison, but I like teasing people for it. But we're getting sidetracked here. Back to the car. So, like I said, this is a four-speed automatic. The car weighs 2,700 pounds. It has 122 horsepower, which is definitely more than the Honda, especially considering that the Honda has lost considerable horsepower, most likely, given its 27-year lifespan. But the Versa has 127 pound-feet of torque, whereas the Honda had 145 pound-feet of torque, and you actually can feel that. So a huge thing I wasn't expecting on this Versa was the near 40 miles per gallon you get. And I'm not one to argue over miles per gallon. When it comes to new cars, it doesn't matter. You're dumping $20,000 on a depreciating asset anyway. Get a fun car, go get your V8, V10, whatever you whatever you want to get. Don't worry about the gas mileage. But when we come to cheaper cars like this, when we can actually start talking about saving money and stuff, uh, you know, it is a very big plus, a car getting, you know, over 30 miles a gallon. And I believe this is probably getting around 37, 38, um, definitely clearing over 40 on the highway. I've driven 350 miles on one tank so far. I just emptied the first tank. I'm, I need to fill up again. And I this car has a 10-gallon tank, so... 
if you do the math, eh, somewhere around like 38 miles per gallon, so pretty good, pretty good. The needle for the fuel in this car moves actually slower than my Camaro, which is hilarious because the Camaro has a 19 gallon tank. And for me personally, with the job I do, being a courier, of course, that's pretty significant. If you take into account, especially when I was doing full time, I would spend for sure $600 a month on gas. So if this Versa is getting near double the gas mileage of what my Camaro is getting, we're cutting that gas bill by like, I mean, it's coming down from $600 probably to like $350 a month. So overall, the Nissan Versa, especially in this trim, is super basic utility vehicle. I mean, it doesn't even have cruise control. So at least it has power windows, at least that. So yeah, super basic, awesome car so far. It is doing a great job on the job. And that's gonna be a summary for this car. So let's go inside now for the Q&A. Okay, jumping right into the questions from yesterday's video. Sweet Styles 403 asks, are you ever going to wrap your Camaro? I drive a 2017 2.0 as well, and I wrapped mine in 3M Psychedelic. That's pretty damn cool. I recommend the 3M Deep Space Wrap. No, I don't plan to vinyl wrap my Camaro ever, just because I know it's like really uh, rare to see a, a wrapped car in the wild, you know, amongst all the cars, but as far as like internet goes, a lot of people wrap their cars now. Um, something I've never seen, and I wish they offered this color with Chevy, is purple like uh, Charger and Challenger purple, how they do for the Hellcats and the SRTs and stuff, or they used to do at least. Um, I would love to get that color like actually painted on the Camaro. So that is a goal for one day is just get a straight up purple Camaro. I have not seen an actual purple paint job on a six gen Camaro. And I think that would be really, really cool and unique. And I will rename it at that point, Purple Flirp, which I don't know if anyone gets the reference. It's Jimmy Neutron. It's the soda in Jimmy Neutron. I know no one's going to get that reference, but <laughs> I will rename it Purple Flirp at that point. Next question. Okay, next one is from Ramiro. I have some questions. How long have you been posting videos and do you think it's worth it to try to start a vlogging life or social media YouTube channel? Is it profitable even without big budgets or just after a few months? And by the way, I hope you had a good Christmas and wish you a happy new year. Awesome, man. I hope you have a happy new year yourself. Thank you. So, that's a rough question. Well, okay, the first one I can answer, um, how long have I been posting videos? It's been two years and three months exactly, right now. Do I think it's worth it to start a vlogging channel or, or social media in general? If you enjoy it and you have something that you like to talk about and you don't have, like, what, why I started doing it is none of my friends are car guys. I have one, like literally one friend who's a car guy, that's Tyler, shout out to Tyler. Um, but yeah, I didn't have anyone to really like discuss anything with or like hang out or do car guy stuff with. Like, you know, everyone talks about having a gang of like a squad of car guys. No, I have nobody is into cars like how I am. And I'm not even that like super into the whole car scene either. Like I don't even go to like shows that much, but still like literally nobody. Anyway, I'm harping on this point. So what is good about having a YouTube channel is it can potentially be profitable in the future if you stick with it, you know, through the long haul and you put, a, I mean, a lot of effort, like a crap ton of effort in your videos like I have not been doing this month, but maybe how I was doing like earlier. I'm going to get back to that. So if you want to, you know, learn how to edit, use Sony Vegas or uh, what is it, iMovie even, you know, Doug, I think Doug DeMiro still uses iMovie, honestly. But if you want to, if you're really good in front of a camera, like you have a good speaking voice or you're at least come across decent and you have things you want to talk about, if you can stick it out through the long haul and, you know, stay on there consistently, at least one video a week for like, it might take, you know, six years, honestly. I've seen channels like grow to about 20,000 subscribers, took them six years. That seventh year, boom, like 200,000 subscribers. It just depends on when you get that wake up call of, like, you know, this, oh, this is what grabs people's attention. It's, it takes, you know, some people start off knowing what grabs people's attention. You know, people do prank channels. People do, you know, stuff that's good, like, uh, you know, um, what is it, like, controversial stuff or drama. Or some people are really funny and get shareable stuff, like music. That's why I like my music channel as well. Um, but, you know, if you can't start off right off the bat with that, don't get discouraged. I would say, um, I know there's a really long answer, but if you really really are into something not like vlogging like a normal life per se unless you're like you know have a super interesting life but if you're really into something and you don't mind sharing like putting in a lot of effort to share it with people over time it could potentially become profitable and that that's why i do it is because i'm really into cars music and lifting and i'm always always throughout my life going to be involved in all three of those things so i'm like i might as well like share that with people and that could definitely be if, if anything a decent side income in the future i know if, if i know if i stick with it you know 10 years same thing with like lifting 
you know, you might not be breaking any records in lifting, but you know, you'll be stronger than your average person. That's what I'm hoping for with YouTube is I put a lot of effort in, you know, for about 10 years and you know, I've never seen the basic what I'm trying to say is I've never seen someone with 1000 videos not have 100,000 subscribers. Reason being is you learn a lot every 100 videos. Like I'm way better than my first 10 videos. And um, you get more comfortable and better ideas. So, you know, if you stick with it, I think you eventually get that you get that spark of what grabs people's attention over time. And uh, yeah, I'd say go for it if you're really passionate about something. Sorry, that's a long answer. I might have been doing circles. Next one. All right, this one is from William Ray. How do you keep motivated to eat healthy and go to the gym? With me working five and a half days a week, I struggle to be motivated to go to the gym and eat right. Okay, well, that's a pretty simple one. This one will be way less long than the last time. <laughs> so it's just, uh, it's, I guess it's just a personal thing for me. I mean, I notice around me that like not a lot of people go to the gym consistently throughout their life. And it, it blows my mind totally blows my mind because for me I started lifting weights um and eating a little bit better I mean I don't eat the best but like I'm, I'm definitely better than like pre-15 when I started lifting so at, at age 15 it became a habit like brushing your teeth and taking a shower is a habit if you go too long without taking a shower you feel disgusting right if you go too long without brushing your teeth you feel disgusting that is the same I, I feel the exact same way about lifting weights and like not eating right I feel like I'm just uh, like I don't know I, I feel like I'm doing terrible things or something like it, it would never even like cross my mind to like skip a gym workout uh knowingly i i'm just so into it i enjoy it so much because when i found it uh at an early age like that i it was a way for me to like improve myself dramatically i mean i went from being like like i was kind of chubby not like overweight you would say but like definitely like a chubby ish kid in elementary school and then you know middle school i lost a little bit of weight and then high school um I got a little bit skinny. I was doing BMX and like skating and stuff. And then, you know, with discovering that at 15 and just getting my new gains out of the way. And uh, they didn't even have good uh, training advice in weights class. Like it wasn't even like proper strength training programming, but just getting under a barbell in general and squatting, deadlifting and doing pull-ups and stuff like that. It brought me from, you know, 165 pound, like whatever kind of chubby fat or chub skinny fat is what they say kind of kid to, you know, decent looking 175 pound. I felt more like man body ish you know i felt like more like getting to be like man size and like looking like a proper dude rather than like a little skinny boy or, or like a little chubby dude <laughs> so uh i don't know there's just uh, that's gonna be one of my main missions for the channel is you know getting everybody to just go you know twice a week 45 minutes just you know if you could just go twice a week 45 minutes you know squat bench deadlift overhead press uh pull-ups or chin-ups are even better and uh, maybe even penlay row, look up what that is, dead stop rows from the floor. And if you could just do that, just do like two sets of five twice a week. Everyone has time for that. Gym memberships are like nine or ten bucks a month now. I was kind of grandfathered in at a six dollar membership. That's why I'm forever at Fitness 19. Shout out to them, I guess. Uh, but, you know, I think it's a really important thing that gets overlooked. And it, it just, I don't know, I wouldn't really. And of course, I've gotten lazy over time. And, you know, I... Uh, you know, I just kind of bullshit my way through a workout. Yeah, it's, it's happened. And um, I wasn't taking my training super seriously, like in the last two years, honestly. So like, yeah, that's why I'm not currently squatting like 315 and, you know, squat or squatting 405 and benching 315. Not yet, but I will. And I think it's something this it's something that should be a part of a part of culture, honestly. And I, it's a shame that like more women don't lift like that either. You know, just doing a bunch of bullshit machines and fluff and pump work and uh, a lot of it is is toxic bodybuilding culture. I, I hate bodybuilding, by the, by the way. I'm just going to get that out there with this whole channel, <laughs> whoever's watching this. But um, I'm getting too ranty on this subject. I stay motivated because it's just part of a habit, and I think everyone should do it because there's so, ma so, so many like cancer, diabetes, disease, and bone density benefits that people don't realize that it's important you know you take care of some health aspects like you know brushing your teeth and keeping your teeth nice so they don't fall out at age 50 and stuff it's the same way as you should lift your entire life so you don't break a hip at 60 or you don't have a heart attack at 50 you know not to get too personal but my dad was not um he wasn't overweight at all he's 175 pounds he had a massive heart attack at 50 and miraculously lived because it was right next to a uh, heart hospital but of course, I take stuff like that into consideration, too, that, like, you just never know. 
it's always good to be on the healthy side of things because you just never know. And if you enjoy life at all and you want to do it, have a good quality of life later on, you know, you, you can have, you can be here for a long time and a good time, you know, it, it can be done. So despite rap songs, what they say, <laughs> but uh, that's it for that question. Uh, very passionate about stuff like that. And that question, thanks for asking. All right, last question. This one's on email. So sorry, I'm going to kind of like read sideways to you guys and just to get it out of the way. Yes, I have glasses. I use them for screens. I do not see well on screens and little tiny black text. So last question. All right. So this is from Sean. Hey, Jimmy, thanks for very informative videos on your Camaro on YouTube, but I just had a few questions regarding your mods, if you don't mind. I recently just ordered a ZZP Catless downpipe for my 2.0. Seems like the product got a lot of positive feedbacks and your video as well. My question is, is the installation process any different from installing a catted downpipe? I know it may sound stupid, but since I ordered a Catless downpipe, does this mean I have to remove the catalytic converter on my own? Or does my car not have a cat back since it is stock so far? ZZP downpipe is my first mod. Thanks for your time, Jimmy. Happy holidays. Uh, and then he sent a second one. Sorry, man. Also, do I need to tune my car ASAP after I install the catless downpipe? I kind of just wanted it for the sound, and I'm reading a lot of mixed opinions on the forum saying my car will be fine with or without a tune with the catless. Man, that's a long one. All right, well, I will uh, answer that. ZZP catless downpipe. It was pretty much that was just kind of a long way of asking two questions, two simple questions. Um, do you have to remove the catalytic converter, and do you need to tune it? Yes, your car has a catalytic converter. You need to tune it, even if you go to a shop for it. You have to uh, remove the catalytic converter, and then they'll put the downpipe in there. That's that's where the downpipe goes. So. Um, you know, and and nothing's a stupid question. I hardly knew anything about cars when starting this channel, so you know I'm right there with you, man. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you have to make room for the catless downpipe. They'll they'll chop it off or whatever, and then they'll install the catless downpipe for you at a shop, or if you know someone who can weld. <laughs> so uh, second question was, do you can't, oh do you have to tune it? I would you know from everything that I've ever researched and heard, and you know, even heard from the guy who rebuilt my Camaro AC, um, you should. You should tune it pretty much ASAP, as soon as possible. Um, it's it's not, you know, things can get out of whack with, um, you know, some you know the algorithms of the computer. It, it's used to reading a certain thing and putting out a certain amount of fuel with a certain amount of pressure. And there's so many things that a, the computer is responsible for. And then you just throw a monkey wrench in it by, you know, putting a da uh, downpipe in there, a new downpipe, or a, a lot of modifications, for example. Whenever, so, short answer, yes, you should always tune your car as soon as possible whenever doing a modification of, you know, engine, transmission, stuff like that. So uh, that is it. That's all the questions. So hope you guys liked it. Um, this was a pretty thorough video. I wonder how long this is going to be. We will see when I edit it. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video. So talk to you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Watch my other videos if this is your first time checking it out. Thanks for watching. And yeah, see you later. Bye.